Using velocity-based training might just be the key to unlocking your athleticism. If it's something you've never explored in the past, it is certainly worth exploring. And in this video, we're going to have a look at exactly how we can implement velocity-based training. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So velocity-based training is simply just measuring the movement of a lift, whether it's bench press, back squat, cleans, snatches, and sometimes free movements as well. You've probably seen your favorite rugby team on YouTube or Instagram, whatever social media outlet, linking up something to the barbell and you've got guys giving feedback around the velocity of the bar etc and it might be something that you're curious about so this video is for you now a lot of the time what the pros do just isn't appropriate for us if we're training three four times a week it, it, there's just things that they can do that we cannot due to time due to recovery but it is one of those things that we can actually take and implement into our training successfully so it's not just for the pros they use it and for good reason we'll explore that in a second but it's something that can actually enhance our training experience as well if you're going to the gym three or four times a week guys it's worth saying if you're in your first one to three years of training then you don't really need to implement velocity based training it's really a nice to have it's an additional layer to programming but if you're in your first one to three years and you're you know a beginner slash intermediate then just focus on the basics executing excellent technique following basic programming principles thanks for stopping by in this video keep watching if you're interested or check out these videos here that i'll link which are some easy programs you can follow um, to develop your athleticism Velocity based training is another layer of programming which is really suitable for people that have got some training experience. So guys, I'll show you the devices at the end of this video when you're more informed as to whether you want to invest in them or not. Velocity based training is nothing new. It's been around for a very long time and used by the pros for a very long time because it works. However, with the advancements of technology and competition, it's better for the user because it's a little bit lighter on the old wallet, let's say. So it's much more affordable now for the average user. So if you're a, a gym owner or you're someone that's going to be training for the next year and above, then it might be something worthwhile investing in. I'm not associated with anyone. Take this information first and then have a look at the devices and decide what you want to do if you want to bring it into your training or not. So there's three main reasons that we use velocity-based training here at Biela Rugby Club. The first reason is to enhance programming and allow for more auto-regulation. So with linking up a device that can measure velocity, you can look at a couple of things. First of all, we can accurately see how many reps you had left in the tank, and that's something to do with a minimum velocity threshold. So this is very cool, at each lift, and each person, and population even, there's different failure speeds, where if you're doing a 1RM on a bench press, it might be 0.17 meters per second, on a squat, it might be 0.3 meters per second, so it's really interesting because that allows you to figure out how many reps you had left in the tank because there's a linear relationship between external load and velocity. So the heavier things get relative to your 1RM, the slower the barbell will travel despite you trying to accelerate it as much as you possibly can. And we'll come on to that in a second. But before we do, let me know in the comment section if you think Mona could have done four reps here if we were maxing out. Here he's doing 180 kilograms for three at the end of a training week. So he's very tired and that's why we've linked up the velocity device to motivate him and to understand his numbers. Set velocity 0.4 meters per second with his third rep clocking in at 0.34 meters per second. Now if you go back and look at the numbers I just shared with you on back squat, uh, the last rep that you have that you can do successfully is around about 0.30 meters per second. So have a look at the video, let me know if you think Mona could have got that fourth rep if we saved one in the tank and I will give you my response uh, after I've seen a couple, of, uh, a couple of guesses. Again, it comes down to knowing your athlete or knowing yourself and how you produce force and getting these numbers over time to understand if you've got two, three, one left in the tank. So from a programming perspective, we can be really accurate and decide, all right, I, I don't want you to max out here because we're working on strength capacity, or it might be that you're working on hypertrophy and you know you want to be in close proximity to failure and having these numbers is a good way of understanding um, that you, you got there or not. So again, it just adds another layer to programming. It's a nice to have, you don't need a, a, a device but there's a couple other reasons why you might want one. Also, before I move on guys, remember that your 1RM can change from day to day based on your readiness. So using velocity-based training as you're going up through the percentages, uh, you might do a warm up at like 40%, then 55, then 65, 75%. You can start to track your readiness. So one of your indicator sets, as Dan Baker calls it, uh, it might be a 110 squat, all right? And you're looking at three reps. 
and you might look at that and you see the velocity score is where it should be and we'll get into the details of that in a second or maybe it's even it's even uh, higher than you thought so today you're flying maybe uh, you can do a little bit more than you thought today when it comes to your heavy sets similarly it might serve to pull you back a little bit so you've got your 110 squat and that's your indicator set and you're figuring out what you do for the day if you go up to your prescribed zones or percentages or whatever and for some reason the bar is moving slower than what it should let's say um, on that given weight so now you can decide if you need to pull back or you need to go and do another set of 110 to make sure you're hitting your zones and it's moving the way it should so it helps for auto regulation and again it gives that extra layer to programming so you can look at it from a readiness to train point of view there and then but also worth noting over the course of a year or a season so you can see that your explosive profile uh, is, is should be going up if you're doing this right so the second reason is to drive intent now i've seen even with the best athletes once we hook up a device that measures the velocity of the barbell they want to put everything into every rep and that's what we're looking for in the gym we're looking for quality reps all right we're looking for uh, as, as as explosive as we can be despite the fact that as we mentioned the load is going to dictate how fast we can accelerate the barbell, but the intention there is always to accelerate the barbell. That's gonna affect our power game and carry over to the pitch. So really important that we're pushing as fast as we can on that concentric phase. And again, the reps are going to look the same because this isn't for beginners. Okay, we said that at the start. So it's to drive quality reps and contribute to the explosive profile, which will help on the pitch. So for me, this is one of the most important uses of velocity-based training for you guys, because it's so simple to implement. You don't need to worry about any other details or knowing velocity zones. All you need to do is have your tablet or whatever device you're using, do your squat, look at the number that you're getting back from there and try to be as explosive as you can with every single rep. And that will have a big impact in your strength, your power and your explosiveness on the rugby pitch. So the third reason why we use velocity-based training here at Biela is to do with explosive profiling. Now we look at a lot of things there, reactive strength index, you know, CMG, a bunch of jumps, a bunch of speed work, but we can also use warm-up sets and heavy sets of strength work to predict 1RM and also contribute to the general explosive profile when I'm looking at guys and deciding where they need to go and where their training focus needs to be. As I said, there's a linear relationship, so we know if someone's hitting certain velocity zones at, with 160 kilograms, um, they might be okay that on paper they should get 180 squat or 170 squat whatever it may be based on the velocity zone so you don't even need to go to your one rms in season to understand that you're getting stronger now this isn't without its limitations so if i wanted an athlete to go to a one rm i would be making sure they have some doubles and singles um, at 90 95 percent a couple weeks before but again, in season, that's not necessarily what we're trying to do. And if we see things moving in the right direction with our training numbers of, you know, five, eights, threes, whatever, whatever it is we're working on, and we see those velocities going up as well, then we can sit back, look at the numbers and say, okay, this person's more forceful. This, this, this person's able to express uh, this amount of weight at this velocity, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why we're in the gym to be able to increase our performance. And when I say performance, I mean how much force we can express. So you can see that's a really useful use of velocity-based training, particularly if you're a rugby player, you're in season, you don't want to be going to your 1RM, but you want to see progress, all right? This will show you if you're progressing without having to necessarily go up to those heavy, heavy weights. Again, this isn't without its limitations. You've not squatted 180, let's say, until you've squatted 180, and there's a skill element to that, all right, and taking a new weight on your back. But needless to say, if the numbers are moving in that direction, then it will just be a case of ensuring that you're doing the heavy weights when it's appropriate, when it's time, all right, which generally wouldn't be in season. Yes, we go heavy in season. Yes, people will get stronger in season as well, but that's with a careful manipulation of intensity and volume, and only at specific times of the season when you know game time is down etc etc so guys here's an example of how to implement velocity based training into your programming so this is a training session from one of our props and you'll see that i use reps in reserve i use percentage based training and i also use velocity based training to prescribe intensity so it's not that we have to use just one method we can use all three we can use two one whatever it is whatever is appropriate and again it just adds another level to programming i think it's especially important when you're working with strong people and you're trying to make them better year on year and that could either be with their yes their expression of max strength or 
um, whatever, whatever the attribute is, power or reactive strength, etc, etc. There's, there's a bunch of things we can look at. I don't want to go too far off piste on this video, but I just want to leave you with a real example that you can look at, you can learn from, or you can try. Again, if you have any questions, please do fire them into the comment section. Check the video description because I always leave a little bit of extra information there, especially other resources, other videos on velocity-based training that are useful. Um, and of course, maybe some research articles as well. So if you're thinking about bringing velocity-based training into your program, what should you buy? What unit should you invest your money in? So we've got two categories. We've got our linear positional transducers and we've got our accelerometers. Now, at face value, accelerometers are a lot easier to use. They're just this little small device that you connect to a barbell, you use Bluetooth to get it on your phone or your tablet, and away you go. Plug and play, really simple. The problem is that they're not always as accurate as they should be, which defeats the purpose of having them. And that's why big sports teams and organizations use linear positional transducers, because they're more accurate and you know exactly what you're getting. So if you're thinking about buying an accelerometer, I would encourage you not to do that. It doesn't matter what the, the brand is, it doesn't matter the technology. In fact, guys, there's even um, watches now that can track your movements when you're in the gym. All right, so first of all, before you think about investing in an accelerometer, you might want to look at whatever watch or ring you're using, if that has that feature anyway. And again, it's not the most accurate, but there's no point in buying a separate um, band or accelerometer if that feature already exists and something that you're already using. So I've used accelerometers in the past, as you might see from the footage in, in these videos, um, but I've also been exploring accelerometers versus linear positional transducers. And don't get me wrong, there's research out there that says, okay, this accelerometer matches up with this linear transducer. But if you look a little bit deeper, you look at, first of all, who funded that research, um, and then you look at, you know, what lifts they did, etc you might find that it's not as valid as it claims to be. Research is great, but not all research is great. Anyways, so let's have a look at linear positional transducers. So there's a few things on the market you can explore. And again, guys, just explore everything if you're interested in this. I have no affiliation with any of, of these uh, units. What we're using now is this one here. This is relatively new on the market. I found it to be very useful, very reliable, and better than the accelerometers that I was using before. Now in previous places that I've worked at, it's always been gym aware that we've used. That tends to be the gold standard, if you like. It's the most expensive. It's been around the longest. You can check their website and you'll notice that there's a few options now, a few different devices, but the old school linear positional transducer, it costs the most, but it's probably the best one that you can get. However, like I said, you've got to make room for new devices. Um, and this one that we're using at Biela is, is certainly proving to be accurate and reliable. Um, so we're moving forward with that. Now there are other units out there that I don't have experience with, such as Tendo. So at Biela, if we're using one at the lower end of the market in terms of cost, and then Gym Aware is one at the top end of the market, again, in terms of cost, the Tendo unit tends to sit right in the middle there. And that's something that I know other professional teams have used. Uh, I've got colleagues that swear by it. Um, it's not something I've got experience with, but look, I think any, um, linear positional transducer is going to be the way forward if you're interested in velocity-based training. That's gonna give you the most accurate readings and ultimately that's what you're looking for. The user ability, both Gym Aware, all the ones that I have experience with, they're so simple to get up and running, all right? Obviously you need to know the context and hopefully this video has provided a little bit of that. There's many more resources that you can check out if you check the video description. But hopefully you've got a good insight into how you would use velocity-based training within your training, but when it comes to actually using the device, Gym Aware is so simple. The device we're using is so simple. You connect it up, you download the app, really easy to use, you can send to the cloud, you can just make a note or screenshot, whatever, uh, however you wanna keep your, your data or your numbers. Um, that's all so, so easy to do. So really, really simple to get going. And hopefully the information on this video allows you to implement velocity-based training effectively into your training so that you can then be more explosive and powerful on the rugby pitch. Remember guys, this is something that's been around for decades. Check out all the resources. I'm really happy if it's something that you're wanting to explore now that you've seen this video. Please let me know if that's the case in the comment section. And of course, if you have questions, you know what to do, write it in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.